Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick trading bits video on how to add indicators and which indicators I use the most and how to manipulate the indicators. I get those questions a lot and other people have asked other people about those questions a lot. So let's go through that uh, in case you don't use TradingView too often or are sort of new to TradingView. There's a lot of stuff here, so it's kind of overwhelming, at least it was for me. I didn't use TradingView for a little while in the beginning because as a noob, I just there's just too much and it was just like, whatever, forget about it. But uh, it's really worth it. If you don't use TradingView, I think you're at a disadvantage. If, you, if you're using something like Crypto Watch or Bitcoin Wisdom, I think those are lesser than uh, TradingView for the indicator purposes anyway. All right, so you'll see indicators here, and uh, there's this drop down. I've never used any of this stuff, so you're welcome to try it out. There's a bunch of stuff here. I don't know what it is. Uh, what you want to do is click on indicators, and if you're brand, brand new, I'd advise using as few indicators as possible. Whenever I see a chart that looks like the Las Vegas Strip, I know immediately that that person probably doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> so... <laughs> So try to use only what you need and nothing more. In the beginning, if you're still trying to figure out what you're doing, uh, definitely play around with a bunch of stuff. But I'm going to show you just what I use, bare bones minimum. So you can see on my charts, I always have these just lying in wait, okay? Now, obviously, if you know me, cloud is definitely my number one indicator. But I use all of these at any periods of time. And to add EMAs quickly, or MAs or SMAs, you just type in EMA here and you hit enter. Even though it doesn't show up, here. It'll show up as TEMA or something, but you can see it added it and you can just change it to whatever you want. So you can do the same thing with SMA, MA, any variation should pop up automatically. If you just type, type it out and hit enter. And something I've done over the years is favorite, basically things that I like to look at or watch. So definitely I encourage people to do that because there's a ton of stuff here, obviously. Just more stuff than anybody would ever use. But if you're looking for something specific, you can go to technical analysis built in uh, and you can sort of look through, I'd say the most commonly used indicators just because they're automatically included in TradingView. They do have indicators that have been created by people. Uh, Lazy Bear is a really good, uh, I like his indicators a lot. You'll find that uh, when you see people you like, you'll follow them and uh, watch for their indicators. Uh, another thing you can do is add your own scripts. These are just stuff I've accumulated over the years. The, really the only one that I use on a regular basis is the futures versus spot premium indicator. And you can you have to add that yourself to TradingView because I haven't published it. I don't know who actually made it, but I've changed it a little bit. And I usually just give it to people and you have to add it in a paste bin to PineScript. The other problem I see with charts who are from people who are new, uh, they usually have too many oscillators on them. So usually I just have RSI or Stoke. I usually don't have both, but some people use both. I usually only use one oscillator if I'm even using an oscillator. I don't really value oscillators too high. Another good one to use is OBV, on balance volume. There's an OBV oscillator, and which is what I like. There's also just a naked OBV you can use, just a basic. This is Lazy Bear's OBV oscillator. You can see even without a premium account, this is plenty of stuff that I can play around with. So the indicators paired with all of the drawing tools are plenty. Now I just figured out that you can star the drawing tools and you star enough of them and it'll pop up on a toolbar here. So you can see, again, so much stuff here. I only really use like 20% of it. Before the video, I just started, went through and started a bunch of stuff. So Pitchfork, obviously, Pitchfork is king and with cloud in my mind. Uh, fib retracements, definitely. Any of this other junk I wouldn't even play around with. Honestly, I, I don't know how valuable it is. I really don't really, s I don't see too many people other than like Casonomics and certain other people playing around with fib spirals and stuff. Definitely the brush. Love the brush. The blue brush, uh, text callouts, price labels. Price labels are neat because you can just put them on, on a level here and you can just move it around and say, you know, that's where I think price is going to go or whatever. One thing I like to tell people too, is you'll notice when I, when I add something to the chart, it uh, appear, it makes it all the drawing tools appear. So if you ever just want to leave your indicators on and turn off your drawing tools, you can do that like this, which I do often. Uh, another thing you do is just double click any uh, window here and it'll make it full screen. It'll minimize everything else. So if you ever want to manipulate the RSI and change the scale of anything, you can do that. And then lastly, as far as indicators are concerned, why I have what I have up here. Generally, you want volume on all your charts. I don't always put it on there because it's not always relevant to me. I don't really I know it, what it is in the back of my head, so I don't really care. But if you're new, especially, definitely look at volume. Again, you want your bread and butter, whatever that is. For me, it's cloud. Uh, I like to switch on EMAs on high time frames every once in a while, just to check what's going on, where bounces are happening. You can see this four hour 
crossed, signifying the beginning of a bear trend, let's say. So this is something I wouldn't necessarily see on Cloud. Cloud says this is bearish, but until I look at the EMA cross for the first time in this video, I don't really know what the EMAs are doing. So they're worth just checking out every once in a while. And you can just see that that cross hasn't happened since September last year. So that's quite a long time. And it's about, it may or may not recross from here. There may, not, may or may not be resistance. So again, it's worth just playing around with a few things, just looking for confluence or resistance in comparison to your bread and butter stuff for me, like Pitchfork or Cloud. Uh, I really like pivots because they draw way ahead of time. And you can see, you know, we bounced on support. This was drawn on day one of the month, okay? So all that was drawn out. Anything that auto draws, I really like because I'm lazy and uh, it gets rid of bias. Yearly, yearly pivots are great too. Again, they're drawn January 1st. Look where we bounced from, okay? Kind of spooky, right? So that's, that's pivots. That's why I use pivots. I don't really know the best way to trade around them other than just look for confluence of support and resistance. I turn on this uh, fractal when I want to see how to use stops properly. So in the indicators, if you're looking for it, it's under Bill Williams or Williams fractal. Okay. All it does is put these little hats on the, on the chart and it does bullish and bearish. If I'm in a bull trend, I just turn off the bull. If I'm in a bear trend, I just turn off the bear. So if we go to the daily here, just to show you. So for instance, if I was on a trade from here, I would keep moving on my stops with the fractals here. So they just keep moving up, moving up, moving up. And then you can see up in here, I didn't get any fractals print. So I'd go to a lower time frame, like four hour. And you can see there's all these fractals that are getting higher and higher and higher. And then here's the highest fractal before the drop. So your stop would be here. And then when this drop happens, you're stopped out. But using the fractals generally doesn't stop me out too early and is almost always extremely accurate. Uh, there's another way to play the support with the bull fractals. I just don't. I'm not even going to explain it. I don't even do it myself. So that's one way to use the fractals for the stop. Again, if you're in a trade from here, you're just moving up the fractals. Uh, you can see here you get stopped out because your stop would be here, fractal goes to here. So depending on the time frame, it's not always great, but if it's on a high time frame like the daily, you can see how it was killer here on this whole way up if you were long uh, anywhere near the bottom or near before the breakout, okay? So that's fractals. And then B bands are my favorite sideways indicator. So I use B bands when price is really tight. You can see in the hourly right now, you just auto this. That's another thing. You can auto the scale if you just double click it. That includes RSI as well. So on the hourly, you can see this past hour, two hours, we were super tight, which means price was super sideways. So as price gets more sideways, the B bands get tighter. And then once a decision is made, price moves outside of the B bands and that can help you conclude direction. You can see here where this is news driven. Price was trying to break upward but ended up falling heavily out down because of PBOC announcements. So there are many ways to play V-bands, but that's just one of them. Basically, you wait until they break, and then you FOMO long or short. So those are my, basically what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. You can see it's not much. I use the cloud and the pitchfork a lot. Some of the other drawing tools, three drives, you've seen me talk about in a few videos. Uh, head and shoulders, I don't really draw head and shoulders using the drawing tool too much. ABCD. And XABCB ABCD is a harmonic tool. And then text callouts, these are just these boxes here. And this is the fractal tool called bars pattern. So it just lets you copy copy the bars and manipulate it, move it around if you want. Forecast is neat because you can click one place and if you're trying to predict for somebody or yourself where stuff's gonna be in a certain amount of time. And if you leave it on the chart, it'll uh, say whether or not it passed or failed. So if you publish a chart or you uh, look at a live chart later on, uh, it'll say pass or fail on here. And then same thing with these. These are just long and short. It helps you figure out the R&R &R risk reward. So for instance, the R&R &R on this would be something like that. If your stop was at eight, 18, you can see the R&R &R on that is 5, 5.4. They just changed this. So this is target, this is stop. Uh, so that's long, this is short, and then these are just line tools. Uh, Ray is neat because a lot of times I'm struggling to like line up the points, but if I just pick two points, it'll just draw it out. So those are what I use. If you have any questions, let me know. Hit me up on Twitter, Telegram, like, share, dislike, and happy trading.